By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing a game of old school against the Proxy King. And that means a deck full of proxies. He is playing uh, a green, blue and black mid-range deck with some cool proxies in it. But more about that in the deck deck section of this video. And he is playing, like I said, against me. I am playing with a deck called The Missing Link. It's a blue and white deck built around Spirit Link. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always, you can also skip that section Go straight to the games. I know some of you prefer to do that. The easiest way to do that is by checking out the description below because there you find uh, timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the action. And in the description below, you can also read all about the rule sets for this specific match. Okay, now that that is out of the way, we are going to start with the deck text. I'm going to start with the deck of the Proxy King. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of the Proxy King. Now, as you can see, there are some lovely proxies there on the bottom. And there are also some city, um, city of Brasses there that actually are altered by the Proxy King himself. Also, that uh, library of Alexandria is proxied out. Now, the cool thing is the other proxies were sent to me by GeoCities of Brass, which is the Toronto old school community. So a shout out to you guys. Thank you for sending these awesome playtest cards. What I've done is I've kept part of it myself, but also part of it I gave away to people, for example, that have an old school cube, to people like the Proxy King that play with them and use them in playtesting. And it's it's actually quite nice. And if you go to their website, I'll put a link to their website in the description down below, you can actually find these designs and you can use them for free. You can print them out and you can use them for your playtest cards. So if you're looking for proxies that are not $1,000, you can find them there, okay? Just a little tip. You don't have to give me anything, a free tip here from Timmy. Um, now let's have a look at the deck. What does this deck actually want to do? Now it's blue, green, black, mid-range, mainly a green and black. And what I always like about these decks is that you have access to Sinkle and you have access to your mana dorks in the form of your elves, right? We see Elves of Deep Shadow and Lanaware Elf. That means you can start ramping up. With Sinkle, it means you can start slowing down your opponent. So you're actually speeding up times two because you're destroying lands on the side of your opponent and you're ramping up yourself with your elves, which is really good. Now, if you combine that with strong creatures, like what the Proxy King is doing here, it gets even more dangerous. If you can get an early Hypnotic uh, Spectre out and you know I don't have uh, any answers to it, I start discarding my cards and I lose the game very quickly. So this is a dangerous deck, you know? And besides the hippies, we also see four Urnims, we see two Sengir Vampires, we even see a Mahamoti Jin, the Jin Papa Moti. Uh, what I also like in this deck is the combination of Paralyze and Icy Manipulator. That's very strong. We also see a lot of power in this deck and that nasty Mind Twist. So this is actually a pretty strong deck. And then when we look at the sideboard, I'm in trouble, ladies and gentlemen, because he's going to cast the Glooms. He's going to board in the, uh, the Black Knights, the Terrors, the Extra Control Magic. I mean, those are nine cards in this sideboard that I think are pretty good against me. So I'm worried. Actually, maybe the Control Magic is not a super card to board in against me, but the Terrors for sure. And also the white, uh, the Black Knights, because I cannot sort of plowshares them. The Gloom is great because it's going to make my Disenchant. My whole white package is going to be super expensive to cast. So, yeah, I think pre-sideboard and um, after sideboard, it's 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 not looking great for me when I'm looking at this deck. It's, it's looking really good, Proxy King. Talking about my deck, let's have a look and let's discuss my chances against this powerhouse. And here we see my deck, The Missing Link. So The Missing Link is made completely out of reprint cards. So all the cards here are 4th edition, uh, revised. Actually, I don't think there's any revised in here. Or Chronicles. And of course, foreign wide-bordered cards in the form of the uh, Serendip Afrit. They're Italians. Uh, cards. So what I've done when I started making this, I wanted to combine Protocol Sorcerer with Spirit Link. Because just the idea that I could ping my opponent for one and gain a life. That's such a good feeling. And I know it's bad because you're setting yourself up for a two for one, but I kind of like that idea. So I started with four spirit links and four protocol sorcerers. So then I decided to go for white and blue. Now the pro problem with white and blue is that there are so many auto includes and I fell for it. I fell for it. I'm just gonna admit it. You start playing your counter spells, playing your disenchants, uh, playing your swords to plowshares. You start putting in your brain geyser, your control magic, 
And then they start to think, okay, what kind of creatures can I combine with Spirit Link? What creatures are good? So instead of me focusing on the creatures of my opponent, I focused on my own creatures. Now, then Serendip Afrid is kind of an auto-include because it is a 3-4 flyer for 3 mana, which is ridiculously good. And the problem, of course, with Serendip is City in a Bottle. Another problem is Maze of If. Because if your opponent has a Maze of If, it makes no sense to attack. So you're going to keep it untapped as a blocker, which doesn't sound that bad, but it is because it's dealing one damage to you every turn. So at least with Spirit Link, I can nullify that damage. You know, I take the damage, then I gain a life back afterwards. So it's kind of zero life at the end. You know, I don't lose any life. And uh, Surrender Perfreed, of course, is a very aggressive card. You want to attack with this card. So if I can attack with the card and put a Spirit Link on it, I also gain life every time it attacks. So, it, you know, that way it, it can still make it into a win-win situation. I feel the card gets better with Spirit Link on it. Then another creature that's really good with Spirit Link, in my opinion, is Sarah Angel. Because Sarah Angel is a card that doesn't have to attack, uh, tap when it attacks. So that means I can attack with it, gain life from Spirit Link, and use it as a blocker at the same time. Again, gain life from Spirit Link. So it's double advantage. Again, it's a great life gain tool. Then I also have uh, Witch Hunters in the deck. Witch Hunter is kind of a little bit of spice, right? Because I felt like the deck is, is not creative enough. So I'm like, okay, I need a cool creature in here. I chose to go with Witch Hunter. Witch Hunter is a card from the dark. And the cool thing is you can ping with Witch Hunter. You can tap it, but you can only deal damage to, to your opponent. So not to a creature, but I can tap it, uh, ping my opponent for one. And again, if I have Spirit Link on it, also gain a life. And it's kind of like um, a, a simplified time elemental in the sense that I can send a creature back from my opponent. So with time elemental, I can send any permanent back. But with Witch Hunter, it's only a creature and it's only a creature from my opponent. But still, I think it's really cool. I also think it's cool that this is on a white card because you would expect this on a blue card instead. The same goes for Preacher, for example, which is not in this deck. Why not? Because I wanted to build a deck made out of reprints. And then you just like the look of all that white bordered stuff. There, there's actually revised cards in here, by the way. Of course, the uh, the tundras in here are revised. So um, I just I love it. You know, when everything's white bordered or black bordered, I, uh, I it, it makes sense to me when I'm looking at this. Now I think I do stand a chance against uh, the the re the proxy king here. It's not that I that I don't stand a chance. I guess I can call myself the reprint king. Shall I do that? Because I'm playing the proxy king. I'm the reprint king here. Um, I do think I stand a chance in this match. Uh, it is going to be tricky because um, he's got the power, of course, and he is playing uh, with a lot of cards that are good against white specifically. I think the glooms from the sideboard are going to do a lot of damage. I think my control magics are pretty good against him because he's got nothing against um, enchantments, at least not uh, before he sideboards. So I think that's going to be pretty good. I haven't seen a Tranquility in his list, I believe. So the, the Control Magics could be good. If I could steal like a Mahamoti or a Sengir, that would be quite nice. Or maybe even a Hippie if he doesn't have any flying answers to that. So I can, I can kind of see that happening. Um, the problem here for me, I think, is going to be his land removal. Of course, the power is going to give him a lot of cards. And if he can just get his creatures out really, really quickly and I'm too slow... Because if you're behind on board, cards like Counterspell become really bad, for example. So th the way, by the way, that I'm trying to do a little bit of mana ramping is by adding those Felwer Stones. I think if you don't have access to Moxen, Felwer Stones are probably my kind of go-to artifact to at least get some ramping in the deck. Especially if I'm not playing with green, because of course green gives you access to Lanora Elves and Birds of Paradise. But in this deck, I don't play with green, so I think Felwer Stone is the best alternative. Then if I have control, I'm going to try to kind of milk out that control with my, hopefully my jam day tomes, you know, getting some more uh, cards, getting card advantage, and then at the same time kind of pinging my opponent to death or just sending his creatures back with Witch Hunter being annoying. That's kind of my strategy. So anyway, this is the missing link. I think it's a pretty good deck. So I'm looking forward to here to play against the Proxy King. So let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So we've got the Proxy King on the left with blue, black, and green, a mid-range deck. And he's taking on my reprint deck, the Missing Link. It's white and it's blue. So we're going to throw the dice here to see who gets to start. And the Proxy King has a nice six, so he gets to start here. Let's see what he's going to do. There we see a beautiful Mishra's Factory and the first proxy of the game, the Mox Jet. And there's a pass. 
There's an island, probably that's all I'm gonna do, looking at my own deck list, maybe a soul ring if I'm lucky. I guess I'm not, a little glitch on the line here, but we can continue. And I think I saw a bayou there, so he can play the bayou. And then if he has a sinkhole, that'd be pretty devastating. Another option, of course, would be just to attack with the factory or play Hypnotic Spectre. That would also be pretty devastating. Tapping two here, are we gonna see, tapping three, are we gonna see Hypnotic Spectre? Oh, Hypnotic Spectre. Hopefully I've got a Swords to Plowshares in hand. Picking up my hand straight away, by the way. And the Proxy King here passing the turn. Playing out a City of Brass, tapping two here, taking a damage, gonna go to 19. I wonder what I'm gonna do for two. A Felwer Stone, ooh, that's not great. That is not great. I mean, I'm ramping up, but I'm gonna lose a card here to the Hypnotic Spectre and taking two damage as well. So much pain here, losing a Brain Geyser. Ah oh man, that card would have been so good later in the game, also to compensate for the Hypnotic Spectre. Tapping four. Oh, there's an Urnum. This could be a super short game one, ladies and gentlemen. I wouldn't be surprised. I just need something here. A Serendip could help me block the Hypnotic Spectre. If I can, like, for example, find a mana, Swords to Plowshares on the Urnum and a Serendip Afrit, for example, would kind of be back in it. Tapping four. Maybe a Control Magic? That would be kind of nice. Control Magic. Now, what am I going to take over? I think I have to take over the Hypnotic Spectre. This really... I wish we could see my hand right now because then we could kind of make a decision together what to take. Taking the Hypnotic. This makes sense. I mean... I don't want to lose any more cards. I'm still on 18. I can take a hit of four or potentially six, I guess, if he animates the factory. But yeah, this is tough. So the Hypnotic Spectre, of course, gets Forest Walk from the Urnum. Not very relevant, but still. And I guess he's just going to swing in here with his four five. I wonder if he's also going to attack with the factory. Seems to be a little bit in the tank here. Hard to see that hand. Looks like an artifact there with the white border. Is it a black card? It's just impossible to see, actually. I mean, I'm completely tapped out. Even my creature's tapped. So it's really a free road to that six points of damage here for my opponent, the Proxy King. There we see him attack. So I'm going to drop to 14 and he's not animating the factory. Does that mean he's got a plan second main? Tapping three here. Another Hypnotic Spectre. Ay, 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 ay. There's just so much pressure. And a Paralyze. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And deciding not to untap it. Do I have a better option? Maybe another Control Magic? Another City of Brass. Hopefully I've got like a Serenip, for example. Tapping five, Sarah Angel probably. Okay, there's a Sarah Angel. At least that can block the Hypnotic and um, can block the Factory if uh, the opponent uh, decides to animate an attack. So he's probably not going to do that anymore. Oh, man. But there's just so much pressure. And I guess if you're the Proxy King, you're just going to attack here with your Urnum. Just gonna attack it with your 4-5. Tapping two, there's a Demonic Tutor. Okay, that goes with the play, Matt. Liking your style. And you can see me kind of smashing my cards. I'm like, give me a break. Oh man. Cause it's been, this game has been pretty tough for me so far. Uh, it just seems that my opponent here is finding everything he needs. I wonder what he's going to pick up. Maybe just a mind twist, you know. Next turn, twist my hand and then it's pretty much over. I mean, it ain't over till it's over, but also considering I've already lost my Brain Geyser, which is one of those cards that can kind of get me back into it. I'm not playing with balance in this deck, I believe. Otherwise, but still a balance wouldn't be great because I've got two creatures and my opponent has two creatures. I guess... Of course, if he mind twists my hand and then I top deck a balance, that's always a beautiful answer. But like I said, I don't believe I play with the balance in this deck. 
and uh, we'll just we'll just have to wait and see what he picked up. Ooh, there's a paralyze. Maybe he picked up the paralyze. Wouldn't be too bad as well because with the paralyze, he's gonna take a card out of my hand straight away. And it's like a long-term problem. Maybe Paralyze losing uh, Timmy here, by the way. Maybe Paralyze is even better to pick up here than a Mind Twist. You could argue that. You know, I, I know it sounds odd when I say that, but I mean, look at what's happening now. I mean, am I going to invest four to untap my Sarah and of course take a damage, go to five? That's exactly what I'm doing. You know? And because of the Paralyze, he was also able to steal a card out of my hand. But then again, we simply don't know if that's the card he looked up. Maybe he had it in hand all the time. And here I'm pointing out that I, you know, found that Tundra in hand, but I couldn't do anything with it. Interesting here that I'm not attacking, by the way, with the Sarah Angel. I think that's a mistake. I think I should have attacked because my opponent only had, didn't have anything open. I could have attacked him for free. That is, why didn't I attack? That is weird. Maybe I was so focused in untapping the Sarah. That is weird. Missing a free attack here. Anyway, I don't think it matters that much. I'm on five at the moment. He can again swing in with the Urnum. I think that's just what he has to do. Swing in here. If I block, I lose my Angel. So I'm probably not going to do that. Oh, he can actually win it here. He can animate the Factory. Attack with Factory Hippie Urnum. Unless, of course, I have a Disenchant in hand. So there we see the attack. If I have a disenchant, but then again, I go to four. Ah, oh, this is so tricky. So I have to block the urn. I'm going to go to one. Okay, so I guess I can survive. If you can call this surviving. Also going to lose one of the cards. Oh man, this is so brutal. This is so brutal. Losing the witch hunter, which actually would have been pretty okay-ish with the board. Too slow. I guess it's too slow. Anyway, um, talking about slow, my deck is just too slow in this first game. I don't even know what I'm hoping for. I don't think there's anything that can save me. So putting the City of Brasses aside, drawing a card for turn, and that's it. Losing it here. Oh, that's too bad. That's too bad. I think, I think in this game, the Proxy King just had the right cards all the time. Luckily for me, it's only game number one. So we're going to shuffle up and we'll catch it back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So I'm one game down, so at least I'm on the play. Let's hope for a good opener here, starting with the Tundra. And it looks like I'm just going to pass here. Yep, passing the turn. Let's see. If the Proxy King can open with the Proxy again, that would be pretty sweet. He did that in game one. There we see a Sinkle in hand, an Urnum in hand. Let's see what he can do. Starting with a City of Brass. And yes, it is an Altar again. Or actually, no, it's the Library of Alexandria, of course. Oh, that's so bad for me. Oh, no. Come on. Give me a break. There's a second Tundra. At least I've got Counter Magic open. Deciding not to keep it open, though. Uh, oh, and there we see him drawing an extra card. Oh, man, this is so bad. And he's got an Elves of Deep Shadow and, and a Mox there. So I'm expecting him just to kind of ramp up. He's got nine cards in hand. And now he's got eight. He doesn't have a green source, it seems. It's really cool, by the way. He made this altar himself. It's pretty cool. And then, of course, this, this Mox Jet is from the uh, Toronto Old School community. Like I said, there's a link in the description below where you can visit their blog and you can find these designs and print them out yourself if you want to use them for proxies. They're great for playtesting, the grading cubes, and just for fun little kitchen table games like today. There we see a soul ring. Oh man, he's putting, he's deploying so many proxies. This is so bad. I think he's got seven in hand, probably wants to keep seven, right? Oh, he's going to draw straight away, and then he's probably going to play. Oh, he hasn't played a land yet. There's the underground sea in the pass. Wow. There is a city of brass, tapping three. Okay, surrender per free, putting a little bit of pressure on. I mean, I've got to do what i got to do. Usually when your opponent has an active library of Alexandria and you cannot get rid of it, the other option that you have is simply try to race your opponent because... Long term, you're going to lose because your opponent has card advantage. So try to put as much pressure on, on the board. If you cannot, you know, attack 
his hand or of course destroy the Loa itself. There we see a Chaos Orb. He's not going to flip yet. He has time. He can wait, of course. I believe seven cards in hand here. He's got some other options, too. He hasn't played a land, for example. So he could try to find another land with the Library of Alexandria. So he is going to flip first. Let's see if he can hit it. I mean, it is a proxy Chaos Orb. Maybe it doesn't work as well. Here we go. And he's missing. Okay. Oh, that's lucky for me. But I'll take the luck. Okay. Oh, he hit it. Okay. No, he didn't. Okay. I thought he didn't. So. And now I want to try. Yeah. The thing is, of course, the that is true with proxies. Usually they're a little bit lighter. Maybe than the original magic card. So they take a little bit more air, perhaps. But that was a miss, but I'll definitely take it because my opponent is having so many advantages here. So I'm really happy with this little bit of luck that I think I actually need. Oh, another proxy. Time walk. I have to say, Mr. Proxy King, you're doing what you're supposed to do. That's casting these beautiful proxies, taking an extra turn. Oh, my goodness. I wonder what else he's going to do now. He can activate the Loa. Does he have seven in hand? Ancestral Recall. This is insane. Oh, uh, well. What can you do? Not much. It's a pretty... I like that proxy of Ancestral Recall. Pretty nice. Wow. I just, I'm just dumbfounded. I don't know what to say now. I'm just so overclassed. That's a Library of Alexandria, the first turn. Then he finds a Time Walk. Then he finds an Ancestral Recall. In between, he found the Chaos Orb. That luckily, at least he misses the flip. I just wonder what he's going to do now. He's got so many cards in hand. Is he already in a discard step? I can't imagine. There's got to be... Oh, there's no land in there. He's got a discard. Look at that. He's got no green. Discarding Elves of Deep Shadow and an Urnum. This is great news for me. I'm taking a damage. Gonna go to 19. So despite all that card advantage and turn advantage, she's not finding land. So that's the only thing that's kind of saving me here. Attacking for three, putting him on 17 most likely. Unless he's got a terror from the sideboard. He is taking the damage here. Tapping four, gonna take a damage of my own. Gonna go to 18. There's a Witch Hunter. Now Witch Hunter is actually pretty good. If it can stick to the board, it can be very annoying for my opponent because when he plays a creature out, I can bounce it, forcing him to discard. I can do that in end step. And if he doesn't play a creature out, I can ping him for one. It looks like he's using the Loa here now to draw an extra card. Makes sense. He's going to go up to eight cards again and drawing for turn, I assume. Or not, was he just drawing for turn? A little bit unclear for me here, but let's just see what's going to happen. Going to tap the Mox for a black, I guess, and what else? Ooh, there's a Paralyze. Playing the Paralyze here on my Surrender. That's a great card to put on the Surrender, by the way. That Paralyze is doing work. First in game one and now in game number two. Let's see what else he can do. Tapping three. Oh, four, of course. There's a Soul Ring, so he's playing that Icy Manipulator. Icy Manipulator... Together with Paralyze, ah, that's yucky. If I can find a Disenchant, I'm definitely Disenchanting the Icy. Tapping three, let's see what else I can do. Maybe another Surrender. Oh, tapping four instead. Gonna go to 16. Ooh, another Witch Hunter. I'm liking this. Playing out all the Witch Hunters in my deck. That is two, so they're both on the battlefield. So remember, Witch Hunter can ping my opponent for one. And I can also pay two white and one to bounce a creature. They're just really annoying to play against. Again, some glitches here. The uh, recording equipment is far from perfect for this match. Seven in hand, I believe, here for the Proxy King. Or does he have eight in hand? Are we going to see another Demonic Tutor? A regrowth. Oh no, remember his bin is full of blue power and other horrible stuff. Oh man. 
Looks like he's gonna go for the time walk. Interesting. Oh no, or the, no, it's gonna go for the time walk. Hmm. Interesting. Of course, he's already drawing more than enough cards from the Loa, so he's gonna draw a card now. Eight cards in hand. He's gonna play the time walk for an extra turn. He's gonna take the extra turn and he's gonna draw again. Well, of course, he can use his Loa first if he wants to. And he's found green mana, by the way, in the form of the Bayou, so he can play. I think I saw a Sylvan there, so now he's got seven in hand. Should probably use the Loa to draw card eight before doing anything else. I mean, this is, he's got so much card advantage. He already took two extra turns. He drew, I don't know how many cards more than me. Oh man, there's the Llanowar Elves. I think he should have drawn the card first, right? Because he's got six in hand right now. Or is he just going to go off that whole idea? It looks like it. Interesting choices he's making. I think I would have first taken an extra card, gone up to eight. Then I would have played the Lanowar, and then you can also still play the Sinkhole. Anyway, that's all in the past. It's always easy to kind of look at these plays. He's got five. I think he's realizing it now. Five cards in hand, thinking, oh, I should have done that differently. What's that black card in there? You see that white-bordered black card in there? So I'm going to ping him for one point around 16. Going to take a damage from my own Surrender. Oh, that Paralyze is so good. Only three mana now after that sinkhole. 14, gonna play a Timmy. Okay, so I've got even more pingers now. So I can deal three damage just by pinging, which is pretty good. I'm still on 14. Like I said, if you cannot take care of the, the Loa on the side of your opponent or the hand of your opponent, all that you can do is just try to put as much pressure on as you can, which is what I'm trying to do with all the pingers, but it's tough. Does he have double blue for the Mahamoti? I don't think so. He does have, of course, some green mana. Does he have an Urnum in hand? It's kind of hard to see. Looks like he's going to tap the Lanawer for mana. There's a Crumble. Yeah, he's really attacking my mana base, and I think that's a good decision. I'm going to go two life up to 16. Only two mana, though. Two lands. That is really bad for me. Remember, I'm playing with cards like Sarah Angel and Control Magic, and I, I cannot cast them right now. At least I still have access to a Swords or a Disenchant. Disenchant will be so good. It looks like he's going to use the Icy on a Witch Hunter to tap one down in response. Okay, now he's going to tap the uh, Protocol Sorcerer instead. And he's also going to animate... The factory and attack. I'm going to take the damage from the factory. Going to go down to 14 again. And then he's going to play out his Sylvan Library. And then I'm going to ping him for two. Put him on 14. Going to take a damage here again from my Efreet. Going to drop to 13. Ah, this is a problem. At least I got some cards in hand. And I mean... My opponent's on 14, I'm on 13. I can maybe still make it work. There's a Spirit Link. Okay, so at least that Spirit Link is going to stop the bleeding from the Surrendip. And then I'm going to kill his Lanawar Elves. I mean, he's got a lot of mana, but still, you know, he only has one green source now after killing the Lanawar. And I'm doing it in my main phase because I don't want my uh, opponent to proxy king to untap with the Lanawar and in response of the ping, of course, that he, um, you know, that he could still get the green mana out and use it, for example, for his IC and his upkeep. I mean, you never know. It's just always better to just get rid of those straight away. And uh, now he's using his Sylvan, by the way, so he get to, gets to look at the top three cards of his library, put them back in any order. And then draw a card. If he wants to draw an extra card, he can do that as well. But he's got to pay four life every time he does that. And you can do that twice. So for eight life, you could draw three cards. But I think he's choosing not to draw any extra cards. I mean, he is on 14. I've got the pinging army there in the form of two witch hunters and a Tim. So that kind of makes sense. I wonder, I'm kind of expecting him to play out an Urnum or just a big creature. Saying your vampire, he's playing with two of those. That would be pretty good. He's got a Mamoti Jin in hand, but he doesn't have access to double blue. 
that's actually the only thing that's kind of keeping me alive, the fact that the Proxy King hasn't really found the mana that he needs. And it sounds odd because he's got, you know, the Soul Ring, the Mox Jet, he's got quite a lot of mana on board, but he doesn't have double blue, he doesn't have double, well, he does have double black. But yeah. So let's see, let's see what he can do. Is he going to animate again and swing in? I'm probably just going to take the damage. Going to go to 11. I really don't want to lose those Witch Hunters. Tapping 5. Yep, there's the Seng gear that we talked about earlier. That is pretty good. I hope that I've got something against it. If I can find another land, I can send it back. Ooh, found another land. Now I can start, I believe, using my Witch Hunter to send it back. That is pretty sweet. And passing the turn here. So he is on 12. Can bounce back the Sangir if he attacks. The problem, of course, is that I also have to deal with that factory. Maybe I need to trade the Timmy for the factory. Because what you can do is I can block the Tim and ping the Tim. Uh, sorry, block the factory and then with the Tim. And then tap the Tim as well and deal one damage to the factory. Ooh, there is. Is that another... Oh, that's a mind twist. That is dirty. Oh, no. Oh, man. That is not great. First, there's the attack. So probably going to bounce it, right? Yeah, I'm going to take damage and bounce it. Oh, man. Are we now going to see... The Mind Twist. No, an Hypnotic Spectre instead. Interesting. And a Mind Twist for three, perhaps? No, an Urnum. He's putting full pressure on. Two damage. Going to put him on ten. This is so interesting. I really expected to see that Mind Twist. But maybe the Mind Twist was a Hippie. But I think it was a Mind Twist. Let's see what else I can do here. Have I found a land? I have. Do I have a control magic? That would be really sweet. Now, of course, I can bounce creatures again, but I think I would prefer to just deal damage. I wish I could see my hand right now. I wonder what my options are. It looks like I'm just passing the turn, though. So I guess I don't have a lot of good options if I'm doing that. Hopefully my hand's filled with like Swords to Plowshares and Dizzy Chance. Anyway, passing the turn here to my opponent. He's looking at the top three cards again, just picking the one. I mean, he's got all the cards he need in, needs in hand anyway. There's another factory. Which is actually pretty good for Proxy King, because that means if he attacks, he can pump one factory with the other, making it a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, man, the problems are stacking up for me here. But at least I'm still in it. We're both on 10. I think I would just play the Mind Twist, but maybe he doesn't have it. Maybe that was a mistake. I would swear I saw the Mind Twist. So he's animating it, putting full pressure on here, just attacking with everything. Remember that factory can be pumped up by the other factory, which is actually a pretty big problem for me. Because that means I can no longer make that trade with the uh, Timmy. Is he going to turn them sideways? I, I would... Looking at his hand again. Turning him sideways. There he goes. What can I do? I hope I have a disenchant for the factory. Going through my hands there. I think I see another Serendip.
Yep, and I'm gonna discard a card here. Let's see what else I'm gonna do. Take a damage, send back the Urnum. And does that mean I'm just gonna take five? Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here. What I could also do, of course, is double block. He's gonna pump, gonna take five, gonna go to four. Oh man, this is bad. I'm gonna lose a cart, right, to the hippie. I hope I'm not forgetting. There's the same gear again. I'm gonna ping him for two. Uh, I should lose a cart, or did I already lose that Felworth? No, I should lose a cart to the Hypnotic Spectre here. So forgetting the discard. Hopefully I remember now because they're pointing out we are discussing something. Or is he changing his mind? Oh, I'm just passing the turn. Okay. So I forgot there to discard a card out of my hand because of that Hypnotic Spectre. That's pretty sloppy magic there. Um, and I'm just passing the turn. I don't... I mean, I'm on four. How can I ever survive this? There he goes, tapping two black for a sinkhole, perhaps? No, animating the factories, attacking with everything. Okay, so I'm going to block one to make a trade. Block another. I have to, right, or else I die. Wow, 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 wow. Take two, going to go to two, going to lose a card. Hopefully I remember now. Okay. Yeah. It's always annoying when I see myself making a mistake. Losing a Counterspell there. Counterspell Witch Hunter is actually a pretty nice combination. If you have enough mana, of course, that's probably the problem, right? You got to have tons of mana to do that, but it's pretty cool. There we see an Urnum. Pinging him for one, putting him on seven. Oh, man. This is so bad. There's a soul ring. Play out the Serenib just to have another blocker on board. Oh, he's going to tap it down, though. Oh, no. Oh, no. What is going to happen here? And he wins it again. Well done, Proxy King. I feel in this game, you had all the cards. You had all the cards. Well, well done. But don't go away yet because we're going to play some more games. Let's see if I have more luck in game number three. I mean, the reprints, right? The reprints got to show their value. I trust in the reprints. Game number three, here we go. So if I lose this one, I lose the match, the best of five. But come on, you know, I think my reprints at least deserve a victory. Come on. For the reprints, playing a Tundra, give me that soul Ring into that... F no, I'm passing the turn. Okay. You know, it would, would be nice if I could get a little bit of luck in this matchup. A little bit of luck. Come on, people. Let's see what the Proxy King can do. So far, every turn one has been very impressive by the Proxy King. Maybe this is just going to be a land and go. That would be kind of refreshing. Tapping the Bayou, though, so that's not going to happen. Playing a lot of our elves here, turn one. And also a Mox Sapphire in past turn. 
So unfortunately, again, we see a pretty strong opener. Are we going to see a Fower Stone? Fower Stone and a pass. Now, the problem with the Fower Stone strategy here is that, again, I'm tapping out. So that means that I, I don't have mana to counter. Maybe it would have been better to keep that open because now he can play an Urnum, for example. He's got four mana. Urnum turn two. That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, man. Tapping a Lana where Crumble. Okay. That's not the worst. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. And it's okay. Now it's gonna. Now it's starting to be really bad. Look at that. Untapping my one lonely island. Again, a really good turn by the Proxy King. Finding a planes and passing the turn. So just a single plane. So I, again, I cannot counter. I'm kind of back to square one. It really feels like an uphill battle so far playing against this deck. If he's just attacking, there's actually a good sign. Okay, I'll leave that. It's not a good sign because he attacked after that played an Urnum. Okay, tapping three. Probably a Surrendip here. There's the Surrendip Afrit, which is good, but not as strong as the Urnum Jin. So I'm probably going to take more damage here from the Urnum. So he's going to draw for turn here. Probably going to turn that Urnum sideways. So my uh, Surrendip is getting Forest Walk. Yippee, yippee, yippee. There he's going to go into the attack. I'm assuming I'm just going to take the damage. Going to go from 21 down to 17. And he's going to play some more. There's a Sengir Vampire. I think what I need right now is a control magic that could kind of like save the day for me or at least some sorts to plowshares I, I haven't seen any sorts to plowshares i mean i'm playing three of those in the deck okay there's a tundra i just really need to find the right cards tapping four hopefully for control magic okay there's the control magic now what am i gonna take this is kind of tough gonna go for the sengir Attacking for three. I think the advantage of the Sengir is it comes to my side untapped and it allows me to also attack with the Surrendip. The downside, of course, is that the Urnum is a 4-5, so I still don't really have an answer to the Urnum. So he's probably going to attack with the Urnum, put me on 12. Maybe I've got Spirit Link in hand. I could put Spirit Link on Sengir. Anyway, let's first see this attack step here by the Proxy King. Going to go to 12. Now he's in his second main. Another Urnum. Okay, Jam Day Tome. I mean, that's bad, but not as bad as another Urnum. There we see an Elves of the Deep Shadow. At least I can swing in for 7, which is going to put him on 10. But I need, I need something here. Spirit Link would be pretty good, actually. Do I have a Sarah Angel? Oh, Sarah Angel. Now it's looking pretty decent. I mean, I think I should just swing in for 7. Oh, I'm just swinging in for four. Interesting. Going to keep... Interesting. Going to keep my Surrendip at bay as an extra blocker. I can now double block the Urnum. I guess that's my idea. I, I just want to make it difficult here for the Reprint King to make a decision. If he's going to attack with the Urnum, I can double block. And he basically is going to lose his Urnum, but he can kill my Sarah. It looks like that's what he's going to do. I mean, I got a double block, right? That's kind of what I've announced here. But of course, if the Reprint King has some kind of trick, no, he does not. Okay, so I'm going to lose the Sarah here. Going to tap six. Uh-oh. Mamoti. Oh, Papa Moti hitting the board. Oh, that is unfortunate. If I have control magic or sorts, let's hope. Let's hope for a right top deck here. Okay. An island. That's not really something I'm hoping for. Tapping three, it seems. Okay, for Tim. Now remember, I can just keep it untapped, double block the Mahamoti. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to pass the turn. That Tim can be pretty annoying for the Proxy King here because it can start pinging away his army. 
So it's far from over. The problem, of course, here is again that in a standstill scenario like this, I am still hurting myself with my Serendip. And, you know, my opponent has, that's a bigger problem than Jam Day Tome. So he gets to draw extra cards. So it's not ideal, but it could be worse. I mean, hopefully that one card in my hand is a Brain Geyser. And if it can find another Control Magic or Swords, I mean, the tables turn. Disenchant would be nice. The Proxy King really in the tank here. Hasn't found that many Proxies this turn. And that's a good sign because most of his Proxies are the power cards. And I mean, I'm just hoping that I can show you guys that my reprint deck is not that bad. You know, it can win games, trust me. Yes, you can obviously optimize it further. Probably by taking out the spirit links and the Timmies. <laughs> anyway. Let's see what the Proxy King is going to do here. I believe he's only got one card in hand, maybe two. Just one, it seems. I think if I would be him, I don't know what that one card in hand is, but I would just first use my Gem Datum, kind of see what I what I draw, or I would pass turn and simply... I wouldn't attack with the Mamoti unless I have a combat trick in hand, because when you attack with the Modi, I double block Sengir and, and Serendip. You, you kill the Sengir, but you lose your Mamoti. I don't think that's a good trade. Again, you're opening yourself up into three damage a turn from the Serendip, so... I think in this situation, pass turn and step Gem Detome activation, or say I'm going to use my Gem Detome main phase. Again, I, of course, don't know what that one card in his hand is. I mean, one card can change your entire perspective, but from the information I have, yeah, he's just passing the turn. I, I, this makes sense. I would just go Gem Detome and step. And of course, hopefully for me, I can find an answer to Nemodi. Again, a little glitch on the line. Oh, there's finally a Swords to Plowshares. Uh-oh, does he have a counter spell? Okay, he's going to draw a card first. And it resolves. Okay, so he's going to gain 5 life. Going to go back up to 17. And then, of course, I'm going to attack him for 7. Or just for 4. Because now I, sh I should just attack him for 7. Yeah, attacking him for 7 here, putting him on 10. Do I have another creature in hand? Oh, I also have a Jam Day Tome. That is not too shabby. I'm a little bit surprised that I'm not using my Timmy here in my main to kill one of his mana dorks. Maybe I just want to wait till end step. So the Proxy King here drawing a card for turn. And now we both have Jam Day Tomes. I wonder what he found. What is he going to do? He's got to find an answer to my two flyers. And that is not going to be easy. He's already lost his Mahamoti. I took his Sengir. He's got one more Sengir in the deck. Hypnotic Spectre is not going to do much for him. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a chum block, I guess, at this stage in the game. I'm very close to my first game win here. It would make it 2-1. That means I'm still in it. Interesting. And of course that Tim can kill some of the ground troops. Or maybe I should just uh, ping... The Proxy King directly, although I don't think that would speed things up much since he's on 10. I would put him on 9, attack would put him on 2. So that wouldn't change much. I could put him on 1, but 1 is, means he's still alive. So I think it's better to ping the Elves of Deep Shadow or the Lanoer. And for now, to keep it untapped to kind of see if he wants to do anything with that factory. Remember, I'm on 9 as well, I'm pretty low. Playing a regrowth, interesting. Does he then have enough mana to pay the Modi? To play the Modi, I mean? 
Changing his mind, though, but I think he's got six mana, so he can play Regrove. Oh, but the Modi is removed, of course, because of the Swords to Plowshare, so he, he cannot Regrove the Mahamoti. So what does he have in his graveyard, then, that he would want to get back? I don't really think there's anything in, in there that he would want to get back, to be honest. We cannot see the graveyard, unfortunately. Maybe I'm forgetting about a card. Wouldn't be the first time. And he's really in the tank here. I mean, I guess he could use the Jam Day Tome main. That could be an option. Okay, so it looks like he's gonna attack. Guess he's gonna attack with the factory, gonna put me on seven. What else is he gonna do? We're in second main, gonna tap two. So he is going to play the regrowth. And okay, he had an urn him in there. So he's going to play the urn him out. And this is probably why I should have used my Tim main. Although he's, he's taking the damage. He's taking the damage from his own Elves of Deep Shadow. Now I've put him on eight. I can attack him for seven, put him on one, kill him with the Tim. Wow, this is really good. Putting him on one. Because he took that one damage from the Elves of the Deep Shadow, I was able to kill him right now on the spot. Wow, yes. And yeah, I'm really cheering here. I'm really happy to have defeated, to win, well, one game. But still, it's a game against here, the Proxy King. And um, it's 2-1, so I'm still in it. I'm still in this best of five. Let's shuffle up and go to game number four. Game number four, here we go. So I kind of feel like I'm back into this. I won a game, I'm feeling confident. Problem, of course, is now that the Proxy King gets to start. Hopefully he doesn't find any proxies. Just, just a duel and pass. Just a duel and pass, it's fine. That would be the first, by the way, that he doesn't have a turn one play. And he doesn't. This is a good sign, playing a Tundra. Ancestral Recall, of course. <laughs> oh man, the one time that he doesn't have a turn one play, he does have a turn one play, but it's in my turn instead of in his turn. Ancestral Recall, wow. It is, when you look at this match, it is nice to see like how difficult it is when you play against a fully powered deck and, and you're not playing an aggro strategy, but more like, I guess my deck missing Link, it's kind of, there is aggro in there. Um, you know, Surrender per Free, kind of, but it's more like a control deck. And I think if you play control without, like, those tempo cards, like the Moxin, for example, um, against a deck that does have access to them, it is really difficult. Because you can definitely beat a fully powered deck. We've seen that on the channel multiple times, but usually the decks that beat them are kind of these aggro decks. Anyway, let's, uh, let's look at what else is happening here. We see some more, some more proxies by the Proxy King. And I do love seeing these, uh, these proxies coming to life here in this, in this match. So we see a Soul Ring, Mox Emerald. Now we see again a Demonic Tutor. He already played out the Ancestral Recall, so I wonder what he's going to look up. He already played out his land for turn as well, because a Loa could be an interesting choice. And he is going to go for the Time Walk. He still had that one mana floating, I believe. So he can actually play out that Time Walk. That's perfect. That is just perfect. He can play Time Walk, take on an extra turn. This promises to be a short game. I'm sorry uh, to all the viewers. I was hoping <laughs> to make it another really close game. Like, we've seen a lot of close games here. But I think in this game number four, we're just going to see the Proxy King walk all over me with his proxies. So here we see a Mox Jet that he's finding. Um, what else does he have in hand there? Is that an Urnim? No, there is an Hypnotic Spectre though. So he could go for Hypnotic Spectre. So he's taking his extra turn. So he could do Land Drop, Mox Jet, Hypnotic Spectre. Also Sinkhole in hand, that, that's tempting. Could he do Sinkhole um, and the Hypnotic? I think, or is that, yeah, because he's got a City of Brass. Or is he gonna go for a Loa and just keep it slow? I think I would go for City of Brass, Sinkhole, Hippie. But he's not. He's going to go for long-term investment here, it seems. Then I guess he's just going to pass the turn, right? 
Oh, he's not. Going to play Hypnotic Spectre. Interesting. I would have, in this scenario, uh, with the choice to play out your hippie anyway, I would have gone for Mox Jet, and I believe that was the City of Brass in hand, and then played a sinkhole. Anyway, finding a Felwer Stone here in the past turn. Already kind of shuffling up my hand here because I know uh, I'm going to lose a card. There's the attack. Going to go to 18. And I'm going to lose again a Brain Geyser. We saw that in game one. And I'm going to take my turn. So no action here from the Proxy King. So he's probably going to try to build up to seven cards in hand. I believe I saw a Surrendip there. So I can play Surrendip. At least then I have a blocker for the Hippie. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So he's going to untap. Going to go up to six in hand. Two, four, six. I believe it's six in hand. I think if I was a Proxy King, I would just pass here. You don't want to play anything out because you want to activate your Loa. You don't want to attack with the Hippie because I'm going to block on the Surrendip. Yeah, exactly. Just passing the turn. Could consider crumbling the Felwer if that's a crumble in hand, but I probably wouldn't do it. You just want to get that Loa activated. Once it's activated, you can do all that stuff. Hopefully I can find a land here and find a Sarah Angel, for example. Tapping two, finding another Felwer Stone. Tapping three, four. Is there going to be a control magic? No, a witch hunter. That's interesting. That's not too bad. The problem, of course, here is cards because the Proxy King is now going to draw card number seven. He can activate the Loa. I mean, if I counted it correctly, he can activate the Loa to draw card. Exactly, card eight. Remember, he already played Ancestral Recall earlier in this matchup. So again, he's got a huge card advantage. And I mean, card advantage is what's going to win you the game. In the long run, he's also got a Gem de Tome in hand. I mean, he's got kind of an immediate problem here that he doesn't have an answer yet. You know, he only has the Hippie on the, on the battlefield. Are we going to see a Sinkhole? Okay, taking care of a Tundra. I don't mind that much. I still have access to five to potentially play out a Sarah Angel. I can still use my Witch Hunter. I guess there's another land again. I guess I'm not just going to attack first exactly with the Surrendip. He's going to take three, going to drop to 17. I mean, my, my problem, the elephant in the room for me here is that active Library of Alexandria. Because that's what's, what's going to kill me. I mean, that's a Sengir in hand. Again, some glitches on in the video here. Using the Loa again, so 8 in hand. Probably going to play out the Sengir. Then I can bounce the Sengir back. So that's a bit of a problem for him. He's, he's got to get rid of that Witch Hunter, actually. I wonder what he's going to do. Because if he plays out the Sengir, I can just bounce it with the Witch Hunter. Tapping two. There we see a sinkhole. Oh, this is really good. This is really good because I need double white to use the Witch Hunter. So now I can use it in response before my land, land gets destroyed, right? I can, I can take the white mana out and at least use the Witch Hunter one more time, kind of slowing down the plan here of the Proxy King. But... This is a problem for me. I have to find another white source. If I can keep finding a white source, this actually would be really, really good. But this is a well-played sinkhole here by the Proxy King. It's really putting me into trouble. Are we going to see a Paralyzer? I believe it's a Paralyzer in hand. He could play a Paralyze on the Surrender. That would actually be a good choice, I, I, I think. Because then I have to pay four. Do I have a counterspell? That's the big question. I haven't played out a single counterspell, by the way. I think because the Proxy King has been able to put so much pressure on me all the time. It looks like I'm going to untap here. 
Take a damage. Gonna go to 15. Oh, man. Okay, City of Brass. That is actually pretty good, because that means I can start activating my Witch Hunter again. Attacking and putting him on 14 with the Surrendip. And passing the turn. There's a Crumble on a Felberstone. I don't mind that much. But of course, I mean, if you've got an active Loa, it's really easy to kind of play out these cards because you're, you're going to draw into new cards anyway. So you don't have to use your resources super wisely. You can just go, you know what, I'm just going to crumble something because it's better than this card. I get that. There we see the Mox Jet here on the side of the Proxy King. Now again, this is tough because if he's going to play out... His Sengir, I'm just going to bounce it back next turn. Then again, it does mean that I then don't have enough mana to untap my Surrendip. So, it's interesting. Also has an Urnim in hand there. I actually don't see the Sengir. So, maybe I thought he drew into a Sengir. Anyway, another Crumble. Going to put me on 19. Now, this is starting to be, become really annoying. So, he's already... Dealt with two lands with two sinkholes and two crumbles on my Felwer stones. So, I mean, it is starting to add up. Going to tap four. We're going to see that earn him. I do believe I saw an earn him in hand. So, for four, he could play the earn him and kind of put me in a difficult decision where I have to choose to either untap the surrender or bounce the earn him. Okay, so here we see an Hypnotic Spectre instead. Now, this is kind of making my decision easier, I think. Oh, we can do both. Gonna take a damage. And what I really like here from the Proxy King, by the way, is that he's waiting with playing out a City of Brass until he has first destroyed my Felwar Stones. I think that's a really good decision. And now he's putting me in a difficult spot. It looks like I am gonna do something, though. Disenchanting here. Ooh, this is good. A Disenchant. That is pretty important. Because now I've got enough mana to and use the Witch Hunter. And of course, well, I guess I'm going to attack. I'm just going to go for full pressure. I only have one card in hand. Who cares? Living La Vida Loca. Frank taking the damage here is going to drop to nine, I believe. And I'm, I'm pretty happy here. I'm able to put some pressure on. I wonder what that single card in my hand is. Perhaps it's just a land. He's going to draw card number four, so no longer has his Loa active. He's really trying now to take over the game. There's another City of Brass. Paying two. What are we going to see here? Oh, there's a Chaos Orb. That is a problem. Is he going to use it? There's a Disenchant on the Chaos Orb. Oh man, that is great timing, but now I don't have enough mana to also use my Witch Hunter to send something back. So it looks like I'm going to take 6 damage, drop to 12. But at least I was able to disenchant that Chaos Orb, because that would have been so bad if it would have flipped that on either one of the creatures. I need both of them to kind of stay in the game. Is he going to tap? What's he going to do here? Tapping four. Are we going to see another Urnum? No, we're going to see a Jam Day Tome. Oh, that's also bad. There's just so much card advantage going on on that side of the table. Of course, an attack for six. Why not? Going to put me on 12. Looks like he's a little bit into tang, though, about the attack. But I, for me, it's kind of a no-brainer here to attack. Maybe I'm missing something. Anyway, I'm going to go to 12. Probably going to ping him here on 8. Going to take a damage from my own surrender. I'm going to drop to 11. Attack him here for 3. Put him on 5. Play a planes. At least, actually, that's important because the double planes means I don't have to take a damage from my own City of Brass when I want to activate the Witch Hunter. So that Plains is not too bad. That Crumble in hand there, that Proxy King can do nothing with that yet. Finding an Elves of Deep Shadow. 
Now, if he attacks, I can bounce back the Urnum. Which at least is going to save me some damage. And here we see him using the Jam Detail main. Another Urnum. Oh, man. That's so much pressure on the board. I mean, if he attacks, I can bounce back. What I, what I actually should do if he attacks is just take the damage. Put him on four. Oh, hopefully I can see that. Because I've got a line to victory here. I just hope that I can see that. Because it must be so tempting for me to bounce back the Urnum here. Take the damage. Take the damage. Oh, but he's keeping the hippie at bay. Oh, this is so exciting. I'm going to take the damage. I think I'm seeing it. I think I'm seeing it. I can... Oh, no. I can't make it, though. I cannot because he's got the hippie untapped. So I can put him on four, but I need to bounce the hippie somewhere. Oh, man. I think I'm still going to lose. The problem is he's on five, right? So I can ping him for one, put him on four. But then if I attack with the surrender, he's going to block on the hippie. So he's going to lose the hippie. He's going to stay on, on, on four. I can then maybe ping him on three, but I can't because I need to keep the Witch Hunter untapped to deal with the attacks from the Urnums. So I cannot kill him next turn. Here we're going to see the extra Urnum. Oh, man. So close and yet so far away. Going to put him on four. Going to untap. Going to go down to six. Oh, man. Going to attack, forcing him to block. So he's going to lose the hippie. I mean, I know what my line of play here is. He's, he's got to block on the hippie. Next turn, he's going to attack with the Urnims. I'm going to block one of the Urnims, ping him to three. Hopefully, he doesn't have anything in the air to cast, and I can win them with my Surrender the next turn. But it's going to be super tight. I need some luck. Or a Counterspell in hand. That would be nice. I hope that's a Counterspell I just drew. I'm passing the turn here. This is such an exciting game. We're so close, both of us, to winning this. Can I make this into a 2-2? Can I make it into a 2-2? That would be so sweet. I guess he's first going to swing in, right? I got to block one because I'm on six. So I can block one, ping him to three, and then attack. Of course, he also has a gem day tome. So he's, oh, he's going to find, he's going to try to find another card. Please don't draw anything useful. That's a mind twist. In this case, that's not useful. What's going to happen here? Tapping two. There's a mind twist for one. Going to lose a planes. I think, I think I, do I have him? Or am I going to make a stupid mistake to bounce maybe and earn him? No, I'm going to bounce and earn him. Going to go to two. I mean, it doesn't have to be a problem, but... Oh, this is so close. If I can untap next turn, and he doesn't have a flyer... Oh, he casts the crumble on his own book. That is brilliant. That means he's going to go up to eight. That is brilliant. Oh, no. Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. This is so bad. I didn't see that line. He crumbled his own book. That's brilliant. Oh, no. I'm going to lose it here. Oh. I need something miraculous from the top. Give me something. I was so close. I was so close. I guess what I need to do is keep the surrender untapped so that I can block the Urnum. That's, I mean, it'll keep me alive one more turn. Oh, it was so if not for the crumble on the book, I would have won. It would have been 2-2, and we would have gone to game number five. What a play by the Proxy King here. What a good move. Crumbling his own book, gaining for life. 
What I'm really missing here, by the way, is a spirit link, right? If I could have found at least one spirit link this match, this game, I would have gained more life and I wouldn't be in trouble. Oh, man. Let's see what the, the proxy king is going to do. Actually, I think the best thing for him to do is nothing. If he just passes the turn, I die to my own surrender. But remember, uh, the Witch Hunter, you can only use that bounce effect on the creatures of your opponent. I cannot use it on my own surrender, unfortunately. Tapping four here. Let's see what he's going to do. Another earn him. Another earn him. Three earn -ems on board and two Elves of Deep Shadow. That's a lovely board state, man. Going to put him on six. Do I have... No, I don't have a sword. That's it. Congratulations, Proxy King, man. What a match. I really enjoyed this game number four. So, so close. This is the magic I love. And I mean, it also comes to show you that, you know, even against a fully powered deck with a Reaper deck, it can still be a very close and entertaining and fun matchup. Um, Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I was so, so, so close. Anyway, thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, please consider to subscribe and ring that bell. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. Uh, please take a moment to like, share if you want to, and comment in this video. All these things are completely free and they really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, I also have my own Patreon program. And um, if you check out patreon.com slash Talks, you can find out how you can also support the channel financially. And you know, I've got about 100 plus patrons and I also have channel members. I'm super thankful to each and every one of them because they help me to continue doing what I love to do and that is making these videos for you guys. So please consider becoming a sponsor of the show as well. Thank you for watching. And now it's time to take a look at our fantastic, amazing, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Here we go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? 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 Ik het dus, ik het dus, somber gezien.